The statement that health is wealth has been passed down from generation to generation and has literally become more of a cliché. The reality of the matter, however, is that it is one of the truest facts that if embraced could dramatically change the quality of a person's life. A moment of illness can wipe away years of accumulated wealth and a moment of financial illness can destroy the healthiest of people. Understanding the relationship between health and wealth is key to a fruitful, fulfilled and balanced life. Welcome to the school where your financial, mental and physical health takes center stage. This is Saturday Morning Live and today I am joined by Mina Azimio, a wellness consultant. Welcome Mina. Now we're going to start right off. Um, looking at your past, you left employment at the peak to venture into an unknown entrepreneurship, now managing to employ thousands of youth and making massive profits. I mean, who does that and how, how was the journey for you? Uh, thank you, Chero Teacher, for that uh, question. And uh, it, is, it reflects back where I began my journey. So after college, you know, my background is veterinary. I was posted in a Kabete veterinary laboratories with animal diseases. Uh, it was an economy in a very big way during the Golden Bug. And the donors put a freeze on a aid officers but not being utilized and i think the 20s after college i was very energetic and i was feeling that uh, what we were doing was not giving me kicks i wanted something exciting to do with my life and again a bit of a background even when i was in school from college when i was in secondary school primary school i have been one person who wanted to solve problems i see problems and i want to do something about it but in office there are so rigid protocols that you have to follow anything done you're following instructions right and they were limiting my ability to be able to do what i needed to do i thought through between what i can do and even lack of the resources themselves and we are being wasted there i decided to quit and i went out but just before i quit i had already started helping the farmers who are coming to the veterinary headquarters in Kabete was Singishu. The veterinary officers in Noazigishu was calling Kabete to get the supplies because during Moise time, I am sure you don't, you are not there, you are, you are very young. Moise way of uh, governing the country was that uh, he was doing district focus. So each district was getting their supplies from the headquarters. Procurement used to be done under all of who did not get the, the, the resources they required to be able to do the, the, the services to their farmers, they came to Kabete to look for them. They got us there and we didn't have anything because the aid had been stopped. And I thought that uh, something needs to be done about this because I couldn't stomach it. Somebody come all the way from Narok. He's coming to look for certain items that they require to be able to offer services. They are our colleagues, veterinary officers who are on the, in the ground, but they don't have the items required. I thought, what can I do to solve this problem? Lucky enough, during those days, we used to get scholarships to go and study in Germany, where the goods were coming from. I Figured out, I went to the store and I found the items which we were supplying were coming from Germany. And I wrote a letter. Remember, there was no email that time. There was no way you could, uh, you write letters, put it on an envelope, you put stamps, then it go for two weeks, then back. So I communicated with my colleague who had got a scholarship to go to Germany and I gave him the name of the company which was supplying the goods to us. And I asked him to ask them if they could supply them to us. They were very happy because any business would want to continue supplying because they're only supplying through the government. But now that the, that chain had been blocked, they wanted a new lineup to supply the items. That is how the business began. And I started flowing. 
we can say that you saw a gap and you decided to fill it. Yes. Okay, now you have climbed a number of mountains, Mount Kenya, Mount Kilimanjaro, the Alps, I mean, just to name a few. Now, I want to ask, is there a correlation of your physical fitness to your business acumen? Ah, yes, uh, a big one. And I, I, I like mountains because anytime I see a mountain, you know, a mountain is intimidating when you look at it. Very huge. I was born in Moranga and uh, in Moranga County and we, we, from home, I could, in the morning, I could always see the snow capped Mount Kenya. And I knew that some people from uh, Europe, Mzungu, normally come to climb those mountains. Never did I ever think that I could do that personally. Until I went to a trip in Brazil and I got people who were coming to, who were planning to climb Mount Kenya. To me, it was beyond me. When I was invited to join them in uh, the preparations, I was not joining them to prepare to climb Mount Kenya, but I was just doing it for fun, for the preps hikes. Longonot, Gong Hills, Kilimabogo, no small, small ones, but I knew that they were the champions to do the main one. In fact, I went with my friend, Dr. Wale, in the first mountain that we went to climb. And uh, <laughs> I, I always laugh at him because he even didn't finish that first one. When I went there and I was able to do the mountains that I was fearing, in a very easy way, I got encouraged. So I did uh, the first one, Williams Hills. The next one we did Longonot, which I had done when I was in school as part of the geography club. But now I'm climbing it now for a different reason. From there, we went to Nini, to Abadeas. We also did it. We did all the mountains and I was enjoying it. In fact, I used to be among the first team that were conquering mountains. And I first started thinking, what have I been fearing? It is doable. I can do this. Then I started now connecting between what I had been told by the, my colleagues at work about business, that it is very difficult and it is unpredictable. They were even asking me, Azimio, you want to leave work where you have assured of your salary to go into business and do things that you cannot be able to predict. It's very risky. Supposing it goes down, what will happen? I, they, they made me fear a bit, but after some time I said, ah, I want to quit and go and concentrate on solving those problems there because Azimio will be making the decision and implementing it so there and then. And this is what was giving me satisfaction. It's not the money, by the way. I never went to the business for the money. I went into business to solve the problems farmers were, get, were having around that uh, 90s, around early 90s, mid 90s and 2000. Eh? And somehow, because of the sheer demand of the products that we were selling, it started growing. And uh, I, we, uh, my business, my company grew. It became now a national uh, institution. We started selling to Tanzania, Uganda. It became East Africa. We started selling to Sudan. We are even going to all the way to the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia. Djibouti, Eritrea, Somalia. We even did the western side of uh, DRC Congo and uh, Zambia, Malawi. So the company grew in leaps and bounds. And how did I do it? When I began, I didn't have money. Money was actually a problem. And uh, because, because that time we used to get paid salary cash in an envelope. I used to talk to my friends. I get the orders two weeks before the end of the month. When we get salary, I, I ask them to give me their money. I buy items cash. I supply to the farmer, uh, to the need, to the agrovet dealers all over the country. I get paid cash, then I come and I refer them back their money with something on top. And they were very happy with that. That is how I got my first capital to do the business. Then later, there's a lady who was in our office who was the treasurer of a welfare organization. This welfare organization had money. You know the way Kenyans contribute money when there's funeral in Mabukama Hizwe. So what happened is that uh, this lady, she trusted me. And she told me that even if I'm not a member of the organization, 
she can borrow the money with her name, give it to me, I go do the business, then I bring it to her. That one helped me because instead of doing business once during the end of the month, when you get a salary, I started now having several other orders that could supply before the salary came. And she had more money than what I was getting from my colleagues at the end of the month. So God provided a way to be able to uplift the business. As I continued now having between the salary, between the money from uh, the nini, the welfare, she also talked to another friend of hers after she trusted me because I was very honest by the way. Honesty has always been my nini, my anchor. Because when you're honest, doors open for you. She talked to another lady who was also a treasurer and they could combine money and give it to me as per the orders were coming. So in the process, I started making a good name in my bank, which I was operating. The bank, I was told to approach the bank for credit by somebody who now was mentoring me in business. When I went, they told me they want surety, security, a car or a title deed. I put my money together and bought a car, which was a second-hand car. I remember it was KWI. When I took the logbook to the bank, they told me that they don't take second-hand cars. And on top of that, they need comprehensive insurance. I didn't know what comprehensive insurance is that time. Because me, I was just solving problems and things were happening. So I asked them then, what do you mean by this? I told you, you have to have a, a, a new car and then you tell your insurance to give you a comprehensive insurance in the name of the bank so that if there is an accident, the bank would be paid, not me. Hey, it was difficult. Then I asked now my relationship manager in the bank, so what should I do so that I can surmount this? He told me instead of a car, it's better to get land in a good place and what happened i because we didn't i come from ranga and they didn't want land from the rural areas when he gave me that i can buy land within uh, nairobi I'm, uh, in the house cut like uh, gong i came to gong looking for land and i got two acres of land i bought an acre at 1.6 million so in two acres 3.2 million when i got the title i took it to the bank they valued it at uh, 2.5 million and they gave me half of that money to start trading with it. I went on with the business. Then my relationship manager told me, if you want more money, you develop the land so that it can be able to get higher value. That time they were giving me 50%. As I continued trading and they found that my account was liquid and it was having high velocity. Velocity is the number of times that you put in money in and out. They increased it to 70% of the value of the property i started building the uh, developing my plot i built a big house by the way because i needed higher to access more money so higher value means more money when i finished my house within one year by the way i the, the house was valued at 22 million so with that one i could get about 15 million to trade so you can imagine now as a million with 15 million and so many orders i became a mogul <laughs> And business wow. became very sweet, by the way. 